Hello, welcome to the abdomen. I'll show some structures in the anterior abdominal wall first, and then we'll take you into the abdominal cavity. Okay, uh, let us uh, start with the reflection of the skin. And in this body, there is not much of fascia. Otherwise, we expect superficial fascia here, having uh, some amount of fat. In this body, not much of fat is stored. So what we are seeing here is uh, the muscle of the anterior abdominal wall. We have three flat muscles over here. And uh, we have some straight muscle here. Among the flat muscles, the outermost is the external oblique muscle. This is the external oblique muscle. Its fibers are directed downward and forward. And its lower border forms a ligament here called inguinal ligament. Here we have inguinal ligament extending from anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle here. Then there is an opening here in the aponeurosis of external oblique. This is called superficial inguinal ring and through this ring we can enter an oblique passage called inguinal canal. This is the inguinal canal which is situated just above the medial part of the inguinal ligament here. And uh, this is the spermatic cord coming out from the superficial inguinal ring. In the male, inguinal canal contains spermatic cord and ilioinguinal nerve. And in female, contains round ligament of uterus and ilioinguinal nerve. The next muscle is the internal oblique muscle. This is the internal oblique muscle of abdomen and its fibers are directed upwards and medially. The next muscle here is the transversus abdominis. Its fibers are directed transversely and uh, the space between internal oblique and transversus abdominis contains the neurovascular bundle of the space. The nerves and vessels of anterior abdominal wall run between the internal oblique and transversus abdominis here. So these are the three flat muscles. The aponeurosis of all these three muscles, they come medially here and cover a long straight muscle called rectus abdominis muscle and form a covering to that muscle, what is known as the rectus sheath. So this is the rectus sheath. We have cut it open to see the contents of rectus sheath. So rectus sheath covers the rectus abdominis like that. We have to cut the sheath and open to see the rectus abdominis. It's a straight muscle starting from pubic crest and pubic symphysis here and going up, getting attached to 5th, 6th and 7th costal cartilages here. And in front of lower part of that muscle, within the rectus sheath, we find another small muscle called pyramidalis. This muscle is pyramidalis. It's another muscle present within the rectus sheath and situated anterior to the lower part of rectus abdominis. I turn the muscle and here we have the posterior wall of rectus sheath. The posterior wall ends lower down here at an arching line here, what is called arcuate line. Below this level, there is no posterior wall for rectus sheath. The posterior wall is absent below this level. Here, at the lower border of rectus abdominis, in the lower part, we see the inferior epigastric vessels. You can see the inferior epigastric artery and two small veins accompanying that. So these are the inferior epigastric vessels. They enter the rectus sheath by passing deep to this rectus abdominis. They enter the deeper aspect. And there is a triangle here called Hesselbach's triangle formed by these vessels and the rectus abdominis muscle. This is the Hesselbach's triangle bounded medially by the lateral border of rectus abdominis muscle bounded laterally by the inferior epigastric vessels and bounded below 
by the inguinal ligament. This triangle is clinically important and uh, the abdominal contents can herniate into inguinal canal through this triangle. In such case, uh, the condition is called direct inguinal hernia. If inguinal hernia happens lateral to these inferior epigastric vessels and enters the inguinal canal through deep uh, inguinal ring, then it is called indirect inguinal hernia. And if it passes through the Hesselbeck's triangle into the canal, then it is known as direct inguinal hernia.